opened here in 2003, so we're a little more than 10 years old now. Yes. This building was built in 1890, specifically for the Chinese population living here. Where we are now, and then out towards Union Station, was what we call historic Chinatown. Since the 1850s, Chinese had been settling in Los Angeles, and it became the town hall for Chinatown. Steve, we're in the herb shop. Very fascinating. Give me a sense of what would happen in this shop. This is a recreation of a nerve shop to give our visitors an experience of what uh, might have been in this store, maybe say late 1800s, early 1900s. Okay. It's important because this is still practiced today. And if you go into Chinatown, you'll still find several herb stores. And we wanted to show the visitors that there are alternatives to Western medicine and that during early immigrants, early Chinese immigrants were using some of these herbal uh, remedies and, and still do today. So let's talk a little bit about the general store because then you have lots of beautiful wares here, amazing silks. Would this have been built at the, around the same time as the herbal shop? This is the Sun Wing Wo general store. And okay. this actually was a store that was located in this building. And we recreated the store. And the general store provided just general goods to the general Chinese population. But they just weren't Chinese products either. Okay, I was yeah, that's ask important that. too. Right. They are products from China, of course, but also American made products, Japanese products. And so it's just a general store for the local Chinese community. It's amazing how these things really transport you, you know, when you physically see the the goods, you, you get a sense of how people lived, what they did, what they bought. It's uh, it's very, very interesting. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to do is recreate that experience and show people uh, the everyday lives of, of people who lived in, in historic Chinatown. In, I believe, 1850 or in and around there, it said that the American census showed two Chinese men in, in the in census, Los in Los Angeles. Yeah. We could assume that the census maybe didn't catch them prior to that too. <laughs> yes. That was the beginning and ever since then, you know, the Chinese population in Los Angeles has been expanding. Uh, there was a time in 1882 when they restricted Chinese immigration uh, to the United States, which kind of put it, stunted the community. But, that was the exclusion? Is yeah, that, that part of the exclusion That was the, Chinese, the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the community had been growing pretty steadily prior to 1882. Mm -hmm. After 1882, it leveled out and then it wasn't until 1965 did uh, Chinese immigration continue. So throughout the museum, you have uh, several articles that I read talking specifically about the violence leading up to the Exclusion Act. What can you tell me about those? The violence was pretty well known and well documented against the early Chinese immigrants uh, trying to establish uh, communities all throughout the Western United States. It still was the Wild West. So the West in general was a violent place. Uh, it wasn't all directed towards the Chinese, but there was a, a substantial instances of violence. There's a Rock Springs, Wyoming riot where they tried to physically evict the Chinese farmers there. There's also uh, riots against the Chinese in Seattle. Both those instances, the U.S. actually had to send in federal troops to try to stop wow. the violence. It came from the recession that was happening, and there's a whole lot of uh, not happy, unemployed people who scapegoated the Chinese workers. There was the Chinese massacre in 1871. Angry mob uh, decided to start massacring the Chinese population. It stemmed from a fight between two rival Chinese groups. Uh, a sheriff came in and was shot and then 18 people ended up being lynched. 19 people were ultimately killed uh, wow. in that uprising. And that actually happened just right across the street. Holy cow. Another really strong uh, point of racial divide was the food. So there was a time, it seems, when the local to Western population further divided itself from the local Chinese by almost vilifying the food. The Chinese immigrants were always victims of otherness. And so that does happen with food. We had the West and exploration of the West. During this time, they really kind of perpetuated what was making America great because we are these meat eaters as opposed uh, to the Chinese who ate, you know, rice. And that was uh, probably too because it was a misperception of, of them not understanding the cuisine uh, that the Chinese were bringing over. So obviously the museum really sees the impact and influence that the restaurant business had on the whole of America and Chinese food. So tell me a little bit about that. The evolution of Chinese cuisine in the Americas 
comes from almost from discrimination. Chinese immigrants who came here weren't allowed to work outside of their confines. They couldn't just become a doctor or become a lawyer. And so a lot of the communities had to turn inwards. Uh, they had to start depending on a tourist economy. Instead of serving their own community, they start serving uh, tourists and outsiders. And so that's how Chinese food became so pervasive throughout North America. You've given me a really good sort of overview of A, the significance of this amazing museum and what you feel as a native, because are you born and raised in LA? Yes, I'm a yeah. proud uh, Angelina. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's awesome.